So you clicked on this video to see what my top songs for the 2024 Eurovision Song Contest are? Well, you're lucky because this is my favorite thing to talk about, so I made a PowerPoint presentation about it. Hey everyone, welcome to this channel. My name is AK. I'm a Eurovision fan from Germany. And this year I decided to capture my first reaction to all the entries for the 2024 Eurovision Song Contest. Armenia, Croatia, Switzerland, Portugal, Sweden. I'm not a musician, not a singer. I'm just somebody who really loves the contest and everything about it. So here we are a couple of weeks before the contest, listening to all the songs on repeat and secretly ranking all of them. At least I do. <laughs> you probably have that one song you're crazy about and think this song is amazing, but it will probably not do well in the competition. And on the other hand, there are songs where you're like, this is so overrated, no idea why everybody likes it. So for that, I made a little sign. With this sign, I want to show if a song will probably rank higher or lower in the competition than in my, in my personal list. Okay, Europe, are you ready? This is AK's Eurovision Ranking 2024, place 37. Is it a talk show opening from the 90s or is it a Eurovision song? Well, it's Iceland with Scared of Heights by Hera Björk. In my opinion, this would have been a decent Eurovision entry a couple of years ago, but it's not a 2024 song. She looks amazing. The song is okay, but I'm sorry, Iceland, I have to put you down there in place 37. Oh, maybe next year. When I heard that entry for the first time, I was like, wait a minute, we've had that before. It's Chanel, um, what's her name? Sara Bonici from Malta. I'm pretty sure this song is inspired by the Spanish entry from 2024, Chanel with Slow Mo. I mean, her song is okay, but it's not the best in the competition and I almost forgot about it. What I'm really impressed by in this song is her dancing and singing at the same time like crazy so thumbs up for that but in the end it's place 36 for me speaking of inspire this is place 35 it's israel and in golan with hurricane every eurovision fan who saw that video must have been like oh this looks familiar the director of the music video must have seen the italian entry from 2020 diodato with fire more because the beautiful dancing group of people around here are very similar to that entry but Nevertheless, the song is not decent. Again, not my favorite in the competition. The best thing about the video is the beautiful dancing group copied by the Italian entry a couple of years ago, but we'll leave it for that. But I've put her in place 35. This is place 34, AKA a not so eventful comeback. Mm -hmm. It's Luxembourg and Tali with Fighter. I like that it's in French. I like the approach to it, but the song itself, mm, it's so generic. It has good parts in it, don't get me wrong. But this year where the competition is so hard and the other entries are so good, a song like this will easily be forgotten. But I'm crossing my fingers that they will reach the grand final and will survive the semi-final because then I think it will be a success for Luxembourg. One of the OGs of Eurovision history, so I'm actually crossing my fingers for Luxembourg here. Place 33. So the video for this was a little observation detective story, but in the end it was a very predictable case. It's Cypress and Liar. Okay, so this song reminds me so much of a reality TV opening and I can't remember which one it is, but this song is a mix of Jennifer Lopez, Rihanna in their early stages, but in the end it's a okay pop song. I'm not the biggest fan of it, so that's why it's in place 33 for me. Amazing aesthetics and beautiful human beings. It's Moldova and In the Middle by Natalia Babu. In my opinion, this will be one of the memorable performance in this Eurovision Song Contest because of the performance. The song itself, it's interesting, but I caught myself when it was playing in my playlist, I almost never heard it to the end or I skipped it. So mm, that's why it's in place 32 for me. But I definitely think that a lot of people will like it. So I'm very excited for this one. One of the best voices in the competition, but at the same time, one of the most generic songs of the competition. I'm so sorry, but it's my own country, it's Germany. <laughs> It's always on the run by Isaac and when I first heard that song I was like okay I want to like it I want to like it and in the end it turned out as an average pop song with predictable structure and don't get me wrong here the song has good parts in it especially in the end and his voice is amazing it's almost beyond human but I think that not a lot of people will pick up the phone for Germany this year. 
In my reaction, I went a little bit deeper about why I think this song doesn't really work this year. And um, I also thought of a little solution for it. If you're interested in that, you can watch my reaction I did for my own country, for Germany. So since Germany is a big five country, they are already qualified for the final and they will probably end up higher than place 31. So maybe, I hope not in the last place, I really do not hope for that. And I also think that this is the weakest of the big five countries. I'm sorry, Germany. Number 30. This one could have actually ranked a lot higher when they didn't make that one mistake they did in the end. It's Albania and Titans by Bessa. So when she won the national election, the song Titans was actually in Albanian. And when they released the music video and made little changes in the end, it was in English. And I think this was the wrong decision. When I saw the final music video, I was like, okay, the song is nice, it's okay. But then I rewatched her national election and it was so much better. It suits her so well when the, when the language is her native language, Albanian. So that's why she is in my place 30. The song is okay, but not the best in the competition. She looks amazing. I mean, I'm very excited for the performance. And I think this will rank up a little bit higher than my place 30. Amazing staging for this one, but in the end, it's an average pop song. It's Denmark and Saba with her song Sand. I actually really do like to watch her performing. She looks amazing. Her voice is quite nice, but the song at the end, uh, it's not as strong as the other entries this year. This will be an amazing song for the last song of the competition. The song has a very epic ending, so maybe that's a plus for her. I'm actually crossing my fingers for Denmark. I think that she will end up in the grand final, but then in the end will not get a lot of points, I think. Okay, for place 28, we have amazing voices and great mixing of style. It's Azerbaijan and Fare featuring Ilkin Dovlatov. I'm actually 50-50 on this. I like the approach of mixing DJs and strings and bringing the traditional style into the modern world. But in the end, something is missing for me. But I do think that they will qualify for the final and they will be a fan favorite. Because from what I've heard and seen, in my YouTube comment section, um, this is a very popular song in Azerbaijan. So I'm actually excited for this one, how it will do in the other countries. And I think that it will end up a little bit higher than my placement. <laughs> so in place 27, we have a very strong entry, but it's not my personal style of music. I'm so sorry. It's no way and got it with Ulvaham. What I really like about this entry is the Norwegian language and the traditional approach to it. The performance is amazing. There's something about the song that uh, gives me shivers, but not in a good way, if you know what I mean. It's not my personal kind of music, but it's an amazing song, if you know what I mean. So I think that this will definitely survive the semi-final and it will rank a lot higher, I think. Crazy entry and unpronounceable song title. It's Estonia and Five Minute Polyp. I mean, we all know that their song insert here. <laughs> it's not the best in the competition, but we also have to admit that it's very entertaining and sticks in your head. And this is kind of the crazy male version of the Moldovan entry, I think. I mean, look at them. They're kind of an eye catcher and I'm very excited to see their performance. And I love that there is a traditional instrument in it. I'm a big fan of that. Estonia. Okay, so I'm so hoping that this entry will make it to the grand final. It's San Marino and Megara. I mean, look at them. It's pink madness with Italian Spanish influences. It's different, it's funny, and it is entertaining. It's not my personal style of music, but I think that it suits the Eurovision Song Contest very well. So I'm crossing my fingers for San Marino. And I hope for a Eurovision Song Contest in San Marino one day. Place 24, Gothic Metal Meets Eurovision Song Contest. It's Ireland and Doomsday Blue by Bambi Thug. What I really like about this song, it has attitude. It's brave and it is a dark story of pain and fraud and uh, Bambi is doing it very well. And it's a very memorable performance, I think. It has almost the same feeling as the San Marino, San Marinian entry, but the approach is a little bit different. So I think that this authentic song will qualify for the grand final. And I think it will get a couple of points, yes. I think so. Okay, I'm actually very scared to announce this place. It's one of the favorites this year, but this is my personal ranking and I have to be honest, but it didn't click for me. It's Ukraine and Iona Iona with Jerry Hale and Teresa Maria. It's not a bad song. It has a strong message. I like the rap part in it, but it didn't click for me. 
I know that the story behind the song is very good and thumbs up for that. And when it played in my playlist, I almost skipped it a lot of times. So that's why I put it in place 23, but uh, I think it will rank up a lot higher than my place here. 22, a song about raving, but it will probably never play it at a real rave. It's Austria and Colleen with We Will Rave. This year we have a lot of rum ti dums and tiki digi dums and tum ti tums and this song is also one of them. It's an okay pop song. Uh, the approach to it is very nice. The video is quite something for the eye. I like the early 2000 vibe of this. In the end I put it in place 22 because I listened to it a couple of times but it's not my favorite. It's not a bad song. It's in the middle right there. I think that a few people will pick up the phone for this one but it will not do so well as the song they had last year. 21. A Disney song that is sadly not a Disney song. It's Poland and Luna with the tower. When I first heard the song, I really thought of a modern day Disney song, which is not a bad thing. So that's why I think this song will get a few points. It will not end up in the top 10, but it will not be in the bottom 10. So it will be in the middle. I'm actually very excited for the performance of this one because I think they will play a little bit with a black and white theme with red in it. I think it can be quite pleasing to, to watch. Place 20. Amazing voice, amazing singer. It's France and Mon Amour with Sliman. And I know what you're thinking. Place 20, crazy, what? But hear me out. I'm a big fan of the minimalistic staging, the emotions, the stripped down version of everything. But somehow, how do I say this? It's too artificial to me. You know what I mean? I mean, it's a song about love. It's called Mon Amour. But in the end, Sliman, I'm sorry, but he didn't sell it to me. It's, uh, I didn't buy it from him. So uh, I'm sorry, but I will probably change my mind for the finals. I'm excited to see this live. I will keep an eye out for him. <laughs> oh, and I... Probably think this will rank a lot higher than my place 20. Place 19, confusing from start to finish and some missing pens. It's Finland and their song No Rules. Our favorite computer expert, Windows 95 man, will definitely leave an impression on the stage. And to be honest, I'm a fan of the chorus. I mean, it's kind of an earworm and uh, they both do a very well job. And as you saw from my reaction, I was like, the entire time because it's so entertaining and the song is not so bad. How can you not like an entry from Finland? So that's why I'm crossing my fingers for them. I mean, this is the Eurovision Song Contest and I love it. Place 18, quiet and powerful at the same time. It's Latvia and Dance with Hollow. I really like this voice and the song has grown on me so much for the last couple of weeks. I like that it's a quiet song and all this madness. I think with the right staging in the semi-final and hopefully in the final, this will leave a mark at the competition. I like the song. I don't know. It's, it's something different and I'm a fan of it. But I think uh, it can go either way for this song. So it's 50-50. Place 17. I have a confession to make. This is my guilty pleasure song of the season. It's Georgia and Firefighter. Almost every Eurovision Song Contest cliche is mixed into that entry. The music, the outfit, the message behind the song, the dance moves, everything. And I love every second about it. I have no idea what it is about the song, but it's my guilty pleasure song. I'm always very happy when it comes in my playlist and I listen to it every time from start to finish. It's always in my head and I like the epicness. Is this a word? The, the epic approach to it. I know that this is not the best song in the competition, but I'm crossing my fingers that it will reach the final. But I'm not sure about it, but I really want to see this on the big stage. <laughs> Funny, sassy, entertaining. This is Greece and Maria Sati with her song Zari. This is such a catchy song. Marina is so likable. She will get a lot of televoters. I'm sure this will be a fan favorite. I love the video to it, the message behind the song. And I'm pretty sure this will rank a little bit higher than my place 16. It will definitely be in the grand final. Maybe end up in top 10. We will see. Okay, so this is the song I was most excited for this year. This is the United Kingdom and Oli Alexander with Dizzy. I really had high hopes for this entry because Ole Alexander is in, or was in a band called Years and Years and they had a beautiful song named Shine, which is one of my all-time favorite songs. So that's why the mark of this entry was here for me. And I was a little bit disappointed by his song, but he is reinventing himself and it's not a bad song. It has, it has something, it's very special. It's not a top 10 song, I don't think so, but 
I'm a big fan of his voice and the aesthetic of his art. That's why the song or the artist is placed 15 for me. And I think this song will rank a little bit lower than my place 15. Place 14 or the award to best staging of the year goes to Sweden and unforgettable by Marcus and Martinez. I mean, we probably all saw their final performance at the Melodien Festival in Sweden this year and the staging was something. So that's why I'm very excited to see this live. Okay, the song. At first, I was not a fan of the lyrics. It's so generic. It's so like... Well, but it has grown on me since then and I actually think this is a well-produced song for the Eurovision Song Contest and I think this will be a fan favorite because, I mean, look at them, they will have the entire Scandinavian countries on their side and voting for them. And But I also think this will get a lot of points from the juries because the producers of the song are very international known. So I'm actually thinking of top 10 maybe around that. Yeah. Okay, now hold your breath. This is a fan favorite and I also like the song, but I like other songs a little bit more. It's Croatia and Baby Lasagna. <laughs> I mean, amazing performance, amazing song, kind of Rammstein, kind of insaneness, madness, craziness. This is fan favorite and I totally understand why it is a fan favorite. It is a good song, but the competition this year is so hard. I would put it in place 13 for now, but I'm pretty sure this will rank higher a lot higher number 12 so artistic so deep so good it's portugal and grito by yolanda this song is so how do i say this so strong and vulnerable at the same time i really like the aesthetic of this the performance her voice is amazing and what i really like about the song is that it's called grito which means scream in english and she doesn't use the word grito one time but she's doing it, she's screaming in the end, and that moment is, oh, it gave me shivers, goosebumps, and the song is so good, and I think this is a very good entry for Portugal this year. Place 11, amazing mix of genres and a very engaging song. It's Armenia and Lada Niva with their song Yako. I personally think that this is one of the best Armenian entries ever, and I hope that they can bring the joy and the happiness they showed us in the music video to the big Eurovision stage because they are such a joy to watch and they are both so talented. I mean, he can play multiple instruments and her voice is amazing and they are such a joy to watch and it will be so colorful and wild. And in my opinion, this is the most European song in the competition, even though it's Armenia and they're not center of Europe, but the sounds and yeah, everything about it is so international, if you know what I mean. So I'm actually very excited for this performance. Okay, top 10, here we are. So from here on, I would be very happy if one of these songs would win. They're my favorite songs this year and I played them a lot for the last couple of weeks and it was so hard to rank them, but I think I made a decision and some of these songs are in their own league and they're so good and outstanding. So here are my top 10 songs. So in place number 10, we have 100% girl power and a very great chorus. It's Czechia and I go with Pedestal. A couple of days ago, they released a new version of the song and I like it even more now. I don't know what it is about the song, but I'm a big fan of it. I like the attitude, I like her voice, I like the video, I like the melody, the story behind it. And fun fact, this was the first reaction I did on my channel and that's why it has a very special place in my heart and I hope it will reach the grand final. I'm not 100% sure. I think it will rank a little bit lower, but um, I hope it will end up pretty high there. So in this one, there are sounds in there I've never heard before, but I love all of them. It's Slovenia and Raven with Veronica. Interesting story behind the lyrics. I recommend you to check them out. I, and I have no idea how to describe this genre, this style. It's kind of deep but somehow awakening. She has an amazing voice. I think that this song is not everyone's cup of tea, but it's mine. <laughs> oh, and this one is actually one of my friend's favorite songs and he is not a Eurovision fan, so that means something, I guess. Place number eight, good vibes and a very clever idea of including a didgeridoo in the song. It's Australia and electric fields with one mil Kali. When you look at the views of the original music video and read through the comments, it seems like that the Eurovision community is not a big fan of the song. And I was shocked when I found out about that because when you rewatch my reaction video, you will see that I was a big fan from the first second on. And this is one of my favorite songs this year. I like the vibes of it. You can sing along. It makes you happy and instantly makes you smile. So I'm hoping that this will qualify for the grand final. 
I'm not sure about it. I think it will rank lower than my place eight. I have no idea why people do not like the song. I think it's amazing. So yay for Australia. <laughs> okay, let's find out if you can guess what my place number seven is by just three little notes. Well, uh oh, welcome to my show. <laughs> It's Switzerland and Nemo and the coat. Okay, this one is like three different genres mixed into one and I love every single one of them. But I think that all of this is totally on purpose and resembles the story of the artist Nemo telling everyone that they broke the code and now tells everyone their story on the big Eurovision stage. I hope that Nemo gives the performance of their lifetime in Malmö and I'm very happy for Switzerland that they choose that song because it's very amazing. This one is the big sister of the entry from Greece. It's Italy and Angelina Mango with La Noia. She is so cool. She is sassy, has an amazing voice. I love the different elements of the song and I think this will also be a fan favorite. And there's one thing about the performance of the song that is a big advantage. It is the fact that it's just her on the stage. No dancers, no big entertainment around it, just her dancing her heart out and this is the thing the audience can relate to because when the song is good and when you feel the movements I'm pretty sure that everyone in the Malmö arena will stand on their seats while listening to this song so very excited for this one and she's so likable I mean how can you not like her while watching her performance and since listening to the song on repeat all the time I feel like I'm almost fluent in Italian so that's a big plus. Number five is one of the few quiet songs this year but Oh boy, what a loud message is Serbia and Teodora with Ramonda. When I first heard the song, it really moved me. And even though I didn't understand a word she was saying, I somehow got the message, but I looked it up afterwards. And when really you look up the lyrics, her voice is amazing. And I'm a big fan of the build-up of the song and the tension in it. So it, it moves from like very quiet to an explosion in the end. And if this will not give you goosebumps this year, I don't know what to do. And I think this is one of the best Serbian entries ever. Number four, the most creative song of 2024. It's The Netherlands and Joost Klein with Uropapa. As I've learned from the comment section of my video, this is not techno, this is Dutch happy hardcore. And in my opinion, this fits the Eurovision song contest so well and so good. Some people may say this is just one of the other crazy songs of the competition, but when you have a deeper look into the lyrics, you will see that this is actually a very serious song and a very personal song of Joost Klein. And from what I've heard, he's a very big Eurovision fan from early ages on. So I guess it will be the cherry on top of the cake for him if he won Eurovision this year. And I really think he deserves it. It will be a fan favorite for sure. Okay, top three. One last breath. In third place this year, we have the amazing... Th Oops. Oh, what, what is this doing there? Never mind. I mean... Let's look at this one. Uh, Sylvester Bell from Lithuania with Look Tech. Okay, I have to be honest here. The song, when I first heard it, I was like, it's a cool song. It's a great staging. But is it really a good song, if you know what I mean? Then I heard it a couple of times and I actually fell in love with the song. It's so good. It's so amazing. It has an international feeling to it, but it's in Lithuanian. So uh, the mix together makes it unbelievably good. Actually very excited to see where Sylvester Belt will end up. Will it be the top three? Uh, I'm not sure, but I can see this as a top 10 song, 100%. Number two, second place. This has been my favorite song for a very long time. It's Spain and Zora by Nebulosa. From what I've heard, this is a very controversial song because she's referring to women who are a Zora, which means in Spanish. But when I first listened to the song and saw the video, I didn't know about all of that. And you know what? Who cares? It's 2024. I just saw a woman who was comfortable in her own skin, doing her very own independent thing, being a strong human being and singing to a very good song with a very great melody, very nice synthesizer elements in it. And I'm just a big fan of the whole performance and the whole story behind it. And every time I listen to the song on my headphones, I'm like, oh, great song. I want to dance along. <laughs> okay, here we are. So this is my personal favorite song of the 2024 Eurovision Song Contest. In my opinion, this is an artistical masterpiece and it's on a different level somewhere out there. It is Belgium and Before the Party is Over by Mersti. I've said it! <laughs>
when I first listened to the song, I was a little bit confused because the climax was so late in the song, but I instantly had the desire to listen to the song again and again and again, and I've never stopped since then. Every time when I listen to the song, I discover new things. Every time I watch the music video, I discover new things. And I'm beyond excited to see what this will look like on the big stage in Malmö. And since I've got a ticket for the evening preview of the grand finale, which is known as the jury show, I'm actually gonna see this live. And let me tell you, if he needs one more backing vocalist, I'm ready. Oh, and if you have an extra leftover ticket for the grand finale on the 11th of May, um, don't hesitate to send me an email or something. So these are my top 37 songs of the 2024 Eurovision season. And I will leave the playlist with all my reactions I did here. So now what we're gonna do I really want to know what are your favorite songs this year. Let's use the comment section of this video as a place to exchange and discuss and chat about all our favorite songs. It's just my favorite thing to talk about, so I'm very excited to hear all your favorite songs. So a big thank you for watching the video and I will see you next time. Tschüss!